Theory number two, then, is a super bomb. No larger than a pineapple, apparently maintained by the CIA, planted either in the truck or inside the building, and detonated from a remote location by a person or persons unknown. Brigadier General Ben Parton of Alexandria, Virginia. He holds a Distinguished Service Medal. He's twice received the Legion of Merit. He was a distinguished graduate of the Air War College. He holds two master's degrees and is a candidate for a PhD. His expertise over most of his 31-year career in the United States Air Force was demolition, and he headed up the Explosives Research Laboratory for the Air Force. He knows how buildings fall and what the identifying signs are as evidence of detonation after they have fallen. He could tell immediately from nothing more than pictures and magazines that the American people were not being told the truth about the Oklahoma City tragedy. In mid-May, a seven-page letter went from the retired Air Force General to Senator Don Nichols of Oklahoma, imploring the senator to take steps to stop the demolition of the Murrah Building on May the 23rd. To allow this building to be demolished would be tantamount to the commission of another crime. At a minimum, it would be destruction of evidence, said the former high-ranking military officer. We caught up with General Parton in Albuquerque, where he was presenting all these findings on the subject to a large audience at the University of New Mexico. And my, my forte and interest has been in the weapons business for many, many years. And when I saw the circulated, published information about the bombing in Oklahoma, I just knew there was something phony about it. Number one, the pictures were grossly asymmetrical, and you just don't get that with uh, bomb damage. Uh, the level of damage for the size munition they were talking about was incompatible with the damage to the building. And I got, gathered all the information that I could, all the pictures that I could, uh, all the stuff that was published, and I sat down and got the floor plan for the building and as much information as I could on the building structure, and I came to the conclusion that there had to have been demolition charges in the building. There's no way you could have, ha no way what happened down there could have happened without demolition charges in the building. And I knew that those demolition charges had to be on three specific columns. But I felt across the front if it had been an outside job, that those demolition charges would have been at the base of the columns on the front of the building because they were available and accessible to the anyone on the sidewalk. But there was one column back in the middle of the building that came down, and they certainly couldn't have been uh, taken out with the demolition charge without someone having access to the building. So I prepared a memorandum and I sent it to about 60 members of the Senate and the House, laying out my concern. And Don McElvaney and I got on the radio talk shows. We both agreed we would hit as many as we possibly could and try to get the Senate and the House to take some action to keep that building from coming down until we could have an independent assessment of what happened. Because I knew when that building came down, there would be evidence uh, forever destroyed. And I suspected that there may be an effort to cover up things, so I felt that we ought to have a separate and independent investigation. Of course, the Senate and the House both acted with their normal black hole kind of an operation. I got, I never did hear from uh, Senator Nichols from Oklahoma. I got a letter back from Senator Warner espousing his wholehearted support for a number of the conditions in the so-called anti-terrorism bill. And Congressman Frank Wolf done back a letter, and I knew him well. And he said, Dear Ben, thank you for your info copy. It was addressed to him. He said, What you're discussing is above my level of expertise. I have sent it to the FBI for the information and assessment and evaluation. <laughs> I then knew that he didn't understand what the letter was all about. Disgusted with the attitude of Congress and dissatisfied with the government's clumsy explanations, 
General Parton personally carried his investigation to Oklahoma City. There's a company in Oklahoma that had pictures that were made throughout the cleaning up of the building. They called, hauled over 315 truck, ton truckloads of material away from that building, hauled it out to a landfill, smashed it down with the equipment as much as they could, covered it up with dirt, put it behind a chain link fence with guards on the gate. So if that's not a figurative and a literal cover up, I don't know what is a cover up. Was this destruction of evidence precipitated because the government prosecutors feared the remaining forensic evidence might clear their official suspects, McVeigh and Nichols? Or would it have proven ATF, DEA, and Secret Service carelessly stored dangerous explosives on the 8th and 9th floors? General Parton feels the photographic evidence disputes the last half of this theory. And here is the stub of column B3. And the top of that column is at the third floor level. And if you examine that column closely, you can see that the rebar is still sticking out the top and it has all the appearance of a demolition charge, the kind of damage you'd get from a demolition charge at the top of that column where it had a juncture with floor number three. General, would you explain to us the particulars, uh, what your message is, what are you trying to get across? Well, I'm trying to show with this layout of the building structure, the pattern of damage that was done to the building from whatever was doing damage. And uh, what I found that you had uh, demolition charges in the building plus the truck bomb outside. Now this is the pressure pattern that you would get from the truck bomb located at this position. And that's about the size of the explosive charge of 4,800 pounds of ammonium nitrate with enough fuel on it. And even though you had about a half a million pounds out here per square inch, by the time those, that pressure wave got to the first point of contact with the building was right here, you're down to about 375 pounds per square inch. Now the columns with the X's you've marked are on the third floor. The, co the columns with the X's I marked are the columns that I concluded were taken out by demolition charges. At the third floor level? At the third floor level. A blast. There was a blast from the truck bomb. There was. There was a blast from the but truck bomb. But not strong bomb. enough to damage the header or blow it in. That's right. But but the uh, as I indicated, there is the evidence from the pictures that show that these columns were failed by demolition charges. With evidence inside, was it really necessary to destroy the Murrah building? General Parton asked that question too. And I talked to the architect, as I indicated before. And the architect told me, and this is the one who was there supervising and advising on shoring up the building. He said the building that was standing was sound. It was his recommendation that the building be rebuilt because everything still standing was structurally sound and he felt the building could be rebuilt. Pat Shannon asked General Barton if this could have been a staged event in order to accelerate the passage of anti-terrorism legislation currently before Congress, which, if passed, would undermine American civil rights. These are his conclusions. They were federalizing crime in this country when the Constitution clearly leaves it in the local level, in the state level. They were giving the FBI and the BATF and any law enforcement agency in this country a powers over the American people that the American people had never, never seen before. It's the same kind of power over the people that the uh, Gestapo in Germany was exercising and the KGB in Russia were exercising. And I just didn't want to see that imposed on the people in this country. Now we come to our third and final theory. Three columns on the front row and one in the second row were taken out with four strategically placed charges. As in theory number two, the ANFO bomb outside in the truck was no more than a diversionary tactic and did little damage. <laughs> 